hello. Happy New Year and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Hope you all had a great Christmas, wonderful New Year's. Um, for those of you watching live on Facebook, which is scaring me because what is that doing? It's trying to oh. reconnect, so we are just going to ignore Who knows? that. <laughs> Whatever. Um, if you're if you are reconnected on Facebook, which I don't think you are at this point, um, we're taping on Thursday, which is not a norm for us. We usually tape on Tuesdays, but Tuesday was the local government inaugurate right? swearing yeah. in of the mayor yeah. and all those people. Um, interesting, not interesting tidbit to share in case you missed it in the paper. So um, after they get, the alderman and the school committee get sworn in, um, one of the things they have to do is elect who's going to run the school board and who's going to like who's going to be the chairman and who's going to be the head of, I don't know what it's called, the chief alderman, whatever. <laughs> uh, it was interesting because it was a 7-7. Seven, seven, chief bottle washer. Chief bottle washer. <laughs> chief, th chief thug, it turns out. Um, it turned into a 7-7 seven, seven split vote, which I thought was interesting. Um, oh, wow. Half of the aldermen wanted um, newly re-elected um, Ward 4 Alderman Jim Roy to run the board. Interesting. And the, the same old, same olds wanted Dan O'Neill to same old, same old be Dan O'Neill. So um, the mayor had to break the ties, so naturally she went with Dan O'Neill because, shocker. Um, <laughs> but I did think it was interesting That's that there were- That's a good were, indication Yeah, we have a say... good solid split on the board. Um, I, if I can, off memory, the seven were um, Keith Hirschman, Joe Lavasser, um, Dan, uh, obviously um, Jim Roy, Ross Terrio, Elizabeth Moreau, Barbara Shaw. Oh, wow. Hmm. And um, I think there's another one that just got elected and it's, it's I've lost it. One, two, three. Yeah, that four, would be make seven. Five, six, so, uh, seven. Will, eight. maybe? Oh, Ward eight. Who won in Ward eight? Um, Ross Terrio, right? No, no, no. No, no. that's seven. Uh, Isn't that awful? Whoever won in Ward eight. Oh, Mike Porter. There we go. So there you go. You got seven that are out looking out for the taxpayers and seven that are, you know, <laughs> still there. Come on to fleece you. I'm going to fleece you. <laughs> um, in the new year. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was Tuesday. Now it's Thursday. Um, in my Facebook feed, which is usually where the subject matter of this, this show comes from, um, concerns over trash policies. And I was like, oh boy, what's going on? What I did find interesting, this was in my email, if you get those Nixel alerts, which you should, because if you live in Manchester, you should kind of know what's going on in your city so that if they aren't picking up your trash or schools are closed or there's a water main break or God only knows what, you'd be informed. Um, but the email that came today says, um, overflow trash, you have a new option. To accommodate the occasional heavy trash week starting January 13th, which is this coming week, residential customers will have the option of placing special overflow bags outside the green carts. There's no charge, but annual limitations apply to each property. Four, bag, four per year for single family homes, eight per year for two family homes, and 12 per year for larger properties. Bags are available only at the DPW offices at 475 Valley Street <laughs> and proof of residency is required. Who's going to track this, well, by the way? Like, a, do they have well, the some so, software so, to be like, you have done well, two bags well, of your I, four I allocated see, bags? I, that's what I don't really know because it says that you, there are these bright orange bags, so this way they know they're supposed to pick them up. I don't know who's picking them up because if we have the automated machines, is there a truck that's going to drive around? I don't know. Um, but, like, can I go and get my four bags now? And then use them at, at and how do they know when I put out a bag? So right. like, I'm not sure that this has really been thought through. Oh, maybe they only will give yes. you four bags. Right. Okay, that makes that sense. That would so make you sense, would... but you're applying logic, so I'm going to assume that that's not the case. Well, but um, thank you, City of Manchester. So then there was this you. whole conversation amongst a bunch of different people, and I'm going to ask people, if you're watching this, um, check out our Facebook page later on today. I'm going to put a survey on there because I am sincerely curious if people struggle to not be able to put their trash out in those toters. I don't, I, I honestly do not get it. We uh, have- I don't know, we got suckered when, remember we did a got, show and, and there Louis was a, like yeah, there was a, there was a special deal and you could get like two for a hundred bucks yeah. or something. Yeah. So we have so many trash cans, well, that's I what, couldn't possibly Even before the automated pickup, because for those of you who are keeping up, there's mandatory automate, automated pickup. So you have to put your trash can out at the curb it can't be blocked, obviously. Don't put it behind a car that's parked there because the trash thing can't reach over the car. I mean, some of this is just common sense. Um, it does kind of stink in the winter months because if there's a snow bank, they can't put it back down. They might be able to pick it up, but they mm. really can't yeah, put it back down. So they're going to put it in your driveway. Road, yeah. So, I mean, I, I get that it's not a perfect system. 
But even before automated pickup, we used the giant toter because it's on wheels and it's got a lid and it's got a warranty. So if it gets broken, the city will fix it. Um, it's huge. It accommodated our trash needs. But when they had the deal on the pack, on the, <laughs> the, the second toters or whatever, we bought another one because it, you might as well have a second one in case we ever have too much trash because you never know. I mean, I get it. And we have our recycling tote. I probably put more in my recycling than I do in my trash on a weekly basis because anything that can go in recycling, I throw in recycling. Now we can debate whether or not that co is cost effective, but that's a different debate. Um, I'm really struggling with people not being able to manage their own trash well enough. Like, I, what circumstances? Well, isn't this just? I mean, it's just an overflow this because is, but of there was like a, post Christmas. But and there was a lot of pushback and... on this discussion about. This is unruly. Like, this is ridiculous. Oh, come on, guys. And I was like, I, I just don't. And what, I, the trash such is getting well, out I of mean, control? I look at it this way. I'm happy to see trash not piled on the sidewalk, as it used to be. Right. Because now it's got to be in a bin. So it does help keep neighborhoods, especially dense neighborhoods, right. nicer looking. Yeah, definitely down in Ward 10. Yeah, it you looks, know, I'm, yeah, yeah. I, Parker Street used to always have, you know, like, I don't, I never could understand it. I, I, even when I didn't have the toter, I still put out a trash can. I didn't just like, oh, here's my trash, you know, and then people have to pick it up. The key to the whole automated thing is workers' compensation claims. There's like hundreds, I want to say between three and $400,000 a year it costs us in workers' compensation claims because those trash collectors are lifting all this and they're just, it's just riddled. There's a reason why certain professions and certain jobs have a higher um, insurance rate because, well, they have... Well, actually, I mean, trash collection is one of the most dangerous, dangerous. jobs in uh, in the world, which is like police officers, right. Right. which is there. not a top 10 dangerous um, job. So anyway, so I'm going to put a survey out on the Manch Talk Facebook page asking people one... How many people in their household? Because I'm curious, because if Dan and I only have two adults, you only have two adults, maybe I'm missing something. Um, some One woman did comment that she had six people, two adults and four kids, one with diapers, so she was realizing that that was adding to her trash. But she didn't seem to not be able to manage it. Like, I look at this- but What's the contention? What are people- One, uh, that uh, it's a, a reduced uh, service. because. Uh, we're, that our taxes go up, which they do, don't get me wrong, your taxes always go up and the services always go down. I'm just not convinced that this is one of the services that's gone down. But aren't they saying they're going to give us more services? How are the services going down? Well, I don't know. The, if we want to fix the ability for people to better dispose of their trash, here's a crazy idea. Make the um, drop-off facility open when people can go. That, I let's mean, start with some common sense. You know? And I think it's got to be able to be have an app where the trash driver... Government, there's an there's app for app. that. The trash <laughs> truck driver, when he sees one of these orange bags, should be like, 166 Barney Street, so that the oh, next, they don't even have to I do that. Know. They could just drop a pen. Uh, that's you know what I'm saying. I mean? Like, they're super isn't rocket tech, science. Tech, it is 2020. Tech can so we'll solve see. all these problems. I'm curious. I okay. would like some feedback from people, so I'll put that out on the Manch Talk Facebook page later on today. Um, so, so trash. So that's that. Speaking so of speaking of trash, up right. at the state house. Up that at is the state the house. Segue. See this? <laughs> see all this yellow? That's bad so votes bad. by Manchester reps. Every week, I'll show you a piece of paper. When we don't have lots of yellow, they've been good. When we have lots of yellow, bad. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We have 33 state reps in Manchester. Four of them are, Dem are our Republicans. The rest of them are Democrats. With the exception of a couple. And I literally mean a couple. Um, Barbara, Barbara Shaw does a pretty good job compared to the rest of the Democrats. I'll give her that. She is not vote stepping with the Democratic Party. Um, they were in session yesterday. They were also in session today. I grabbed the roll call votes from a handful of bills just to tell you, show you how really, really important some of the things that they're spending time working on your behalf for. Um, one of the most you know, important- So today and tomorrow, just to back up for the folks back home, they're basically looking at the, the bills from last year, um, right? So were mm, these all vetoed no, bills or are they all some of these? I think, some of, are, some, of I think some of them have already come out of committee. I don't, 
I don't really know. I, I got the impression Some that of them were definitely from last year. Are like sort of last year's bills that are just, you Thanks. know, like a bad penny. They just keep coming back. Well, um, some of them were vetoes. I know there was a red there, flag bill. There was. There was a red flag bill, which was basically going to say the government has the right to take away your guns without any due process. And you would have to, instead of proving your guilt, would have to prove your innocence um, in the name of safety somehow. So, and... and I think something that's really important for people to understand, and maybe we should just like stop and pause and sit here for two secs, is think about, so I know some people just don't like guns, right? So they hear guns and they're ah! like, well, let's take guns. And that gives them a warm and fuzzy and they think that's going to make the world a better place. But here's the thing, right? So when we talk about due process, the issue is there is a legal way that if your people have rights and if you want to take their rights away, they have a, there is a legal way to do that. And so imagine it wasn't guns. Just imagine it's something else that you actually like. And we say we're going to write a law and we're going to write a bill and we're going to say that based on what your neighbor said or what law enforcement said, someone can just simply come to your house and take whatever that thing is. Now, when it's something you like, I think everyone would agree that sounds slightly absurd, right? Like, I don't know, we're going to come and we're going to confiscate your forks because forks make people fat. It's the same logic as saying guns kill people. Uh, no, it is a person with a tool like a fork mm -hmm. or a gun. So when we talk about the fact that someone uh, won't have due process, what we're saying is you're destroying the fundamentals mm -hmm of the legal system that has worked pretty well for hundreds of years. Right. So it's not like some willy-nilly thing, or it's not even really a debate about guns. I mean, people like to frame it that way, but I think it's important for people to genuinely understand that this is actually about um, changing our legal system, changing the way um, and changing the balance of power between us and our government. It's basically ceding things that we have held as private citizens and as individuals in life and saying, well, from now on, we're just going to go on, on someone's opinion about something as opposed to, hey, there is this process we need to go through every time we want to restrict someone's rights. So I just want to make sure people back home right. really understand that. Because I think sometimes, you know, we, we say these words and, and, then, and, 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 and it we, just gets glossed over yeah. and people don't really think or understand it or go, well, actually, this isn't really about guns. This is about something much, much bigger. And, right. Um, just side note, uh, Representative Bob Backus um, from <laughs> Ward Whatever was one of the co-sponsors of this bill. So yeah, shame that on you, Bob Backus. Doesn't surprise no. me. Um, <laughs> I've seen so that was an important bills. bill that they voted on. Um, I thought it would be funny to talk a little bit about two kind of Absurd in my view. Okay. <laughs> the first one is uh, something that is so important to so many people. So, so important. Renaming Columbus Day as Indigenous People's Day. Because, you know, I'm pretty sure when I knock on doors and I say, what's important to you? People say, Columbus Day. We shouldn't call Columbus Day Columbus Day. We can debate all day long whether Columbus Day, whether Columbus was a bad guy, a good guy. Reality is, he did kind of travel across the world and kind of got us moving. Whether Yes, there were people here. He might not have. Okay, whatever. Um, both of the Boldens, Amanda Bolden and Andrew Bolden from w Manchester Ward 5, were you know co-sponsors of this very, very important bill. Um, it passed. Nope, they tabled it. Thank God. They tabled oh, they the bill um, 179 to 178. Nearly. <gasps> wow, that was close. Nearly all of the Democrats from Manchester voted not to table it. So, okay. Um, so I just thought that was kind of funny because I. I mean, can we. You know, is we that really us? what's important in the world? Columbus Day? Well, it's, it's you know, and I even understand the motivations I, behind that. I, you yeah. know, it's not something that, you know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't think it's but important. But there was actually a but, floor debate over Columbus Day. Wow. But yeah, I don't know. I, I would love to see some kind of thing where we can go, okay, here are the thousand bills, which and is look, can literally we prioritize is. prioritize them a bit? You know, can we, yeah, or can we just be like, okay, here are a thousand bills. Now someone has to go, we're only allowed to pick a hundred. Right. Which ones do we really, really, right. really care right. about? Because well, there's I, just too as much. As much as sometimes I thought, of, I wouldn't think it would be good to limit the number of prime, spot, like number of bills somebody can be the prime sponsor of. 
But really, if I, if you limited it to even two per rep, that's still 800 bills. But let's say we, not everybody puts in legislation. It's tons of reps just go up there and push the button that their party tells them to, and that's all they do. Um, but even if everybody put in two, you'd still only have 800 bills. And they're definitely, you know, undoubtedly. <laughs> only, only 800 but bills. It's 2020. It, how many more laws can we write, people? How, um, but imagine if I wanted to put in three and you were, both of us were state reps. If my idea is good enough, can I find somebody else to be the prime sponsor of it? You know, come on. So there could be rules, whatever. Um, this one I just thought was funny and it's, hits a little bit close to home because one of the co-sponsors was um, Ward 10 representative Tim Smith because he puts in stuff about really important stuff sometimes too. So this bill, HB 506, which um, passed 186 to 173. Um, actually, that was the amendment. That was to adopt the amendment, which is funnier even yet. This bill originally said that... Uh, da -da, Holidays will be, and it lists off, you know, Martin Luther King Day and all these things, and Election Day. Yeah, yeah. I've it, seen this so, trend. But, but think about this. Who are the only people that are guaranteed to get state holidays off? Well, and, and paid. And paid. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, no. This is, well, um, this says this bill makes the day of the biennial state primary election preceding a general election and the day of the biennial state election, so not city elections, just state elections, um, Legal holidays of the state. So in case you missed the little, what's that actually mean? That means schools would all be closed, which they already are. But that means every state employee gets paid, gets paid with the day off on election day. Which, I mean, in some ways, I mean, you know, they're not really hiding the agendas anymore. No, I feel I mean, like that, you know, what, one not of the every trends... state employee is bad. I'm not saying that, but oh. I do find that putting in a bill. But wait, this is where it gets funny. So, okay, obviously that's a little onerous because you're basically saying, hey, we'd like more government workers to be able to go and vote, right? Then, and it, it goes through all, any, st wait, any state well, office. I'm pretty sure they all go and vote. Any anyway. state <laughs> office, city, town, school district, and community college or university, which is supported by the state, shall not be open for regular purposes. So like you're saying, we want the, governor, the government employees to be able to more easily. Now, other employees sh shall allow employees up to three hours away. Hello, polls are open before like many hours of the day. But, so there was a floor amendment. There was an, an amendment. Tell me, Tammy, did they make it worse or no. better? Well, <laughs> they actually made it better. Good. I mean, I could still think it's stupid. But this took out all the part about the state stuff and said, people, all employers, yeah. when practical, when practical, when practicable, shall employ allow employees up to da da da. So they didn't say, oh, state offices and all the government offices need to be closed. So I th this is a good change, right? Is, is it, or do it, did this literally waste three hours well, no, and I, nothing I, I totally, has changed? But what's funny? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13 of the Democrats from Manchester voted no on that amendment. So they weren't, they, the goal wasn't to make it easier for everybody to vote. The goal for, let's go through the names. Uh, Jane Bolio, Don Bouchard, Amanda Bolden, Andrew Bolden, Erica Connors, Mary Friedis. Uh, I don't know why Larry Gagney voted against the amendment, but he probably just thought the whole thing was stupid. Uh, Nicole Klein Knight, Richard Comey, Israel Padera, Joshua Query, Tim Smith and Matthew Wilhelm all thought the original bill was more worthy than the, the amended one. And of course, so the shame on them, because I'm sorry, that's blatantly trying to say we would like people who may be more inclined to vote with Democrats to not have to go to work on Election Day. And, really? and, and we're not actually willing to extend that. To everyone. everybody, just the people that are more likely to vote for us. And, and so there's also, you know, there's this pesky New Hampshire constitution, which I wish we would pay more attention to, uh, which amongst other things says that we're not supposed to create two classes of men. And, and yet every single yeah. law we go up to the state yeah. house to pass pretty much creates 
different classes of men because in the end all the government can do is they're just redistributing wealth they're taking money from one group of people and they're giving it to another group of people so, so i don't see how some that of the other absurd, wouldn't have created really bad stuff in the last two days um this bill permits towns to adopt bylaws to regulate the distribution of plastic bags because oh this is the yeah, whole yep that's yep. all the, the that's the democrats they all vote for that um Actually, I saw a hilarious thing on, on Facebook today. Um, are you familiar with Babylon B? Yes. So, um, and actually he, the editor of that is going to be speaking at Liberty Forum, which is coming which up. Which you can February find at libertyforum.com. NHLibertyForum.org, I think, maybe. I'm not actually sure. Google but it's NH, NH Liberty, Liberty Forum. Forum. And you'll find it. But anyway, so the editor who writes about 75% of the stories is going to be one of the speakers at this winter conference we have coming up but the headline i don't even read the articles right, i just, just get headlines. amused by the headlines and the headline was um democrats clutching at straws over impeachment now <laughs> sad because they banned plastic straws <laughs> and i was like oh. yeah. you know i here's the thing right like I, and i laugh equally you know yeah, on much sides. on both I'm any, sides i'm a you nonpartisan know? His, um, uh, of, yeah, yeah if it's funny if you Satire. make me laugh i right. you know i'm i'm on board and and that one really genuinely did make me laugh um the democrats also voted to license art therapists <gasps> okay, so New Hampshire, <laughs> New Hampshire, which is supposed to be the live free or die state, has one of the worst licensing like yeah. climates in America. Yep. I don't know why. We're okay? obsessed. It, like, the like, government six can... years, six years ago, it was like this huge fight to to end hair braiding yep. licensing. You were required to do like hundreds of hours of training in yep. order to braid hair now yeah. folks you know if if we're in these cycles where people go why 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 are people struggling maybe we shouldn't make it harder for people to work and we yeah. certainly shouldn't have how many pages is that oh, like a this six is page like bill, an eight, eight page, page bill. bill it's many 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 pages to, oh, to about what? art therapy i don't even you know, i'm not even 100 percent sure what art therapy is but i am fairly confident that it doesn't take a license to do it's probably one of two things we and Dan were talking about this. Is it um, helping people with disabilities, you know, do art for therapy, meaning like if you didn't have any hands, or is it psychological? I thought it was more for like psychiatric where it's therapeutic and it's pain. Okay, we have a relative that does art therapy, or did before she retired. I'm sorry. If we had expected her to get a master's, that, no. No, and no, the thing is just, just no. these, these all, all occupational licensing does is it Limit. creates a barrier to, to entry to employment. So if we want more people to have more jobs, we should have less occupational licenses and let the market work. Now, spoiler alert, folks, how the market works is if you're crap at something. Including art therapy. Eventually, no one's going to go to your service. Why? Because, because government, there's an app for that. You'll have things like Yelp. Yep. You'll have things where you'll have, and you have word of mouth, yep. right? And yep. people can go, oh, you know what? This art therapist is awesome. You should go here. And actually, this one's terrible, or this one's okay, but she's cheaper, so I'm going to go to her, right? That's how the market works. We don't need thousands of pages of laws. Yep. No. The only, the only Democrat, I think, who didn't vote for it was Kendall Snow. Yeah. Democrats all think we need to license art therapy. Um, we also regurgitated the income tax bill. Um, I guess we're going to have to buy more red pens and send them up to Chris Nunu because he's going to have to start again. I mean, I thought, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the reality. It's math in the legislature. If you didn't have the votes last year to override a veto, why bring it up again short of the fact that you would just like it to be in conversation during an election year? It's well, in conversation, and also I think it's endemic of the the the, the state itself. It's a waste of time, yeah. and it's like good grief. I There's mean, gotta be more aren't we inefficient things. enough? Yeah. 
As it is. Um, <laughs> because we're down under that five minute warning because this camera's working today. Um, I do want to remind people, if you are watching this on Facebook, which I'm sorry, I don't think I you don't are. Think Maybe you're went. listening on Facebook. Um, <laughs> but this coming Saturday, which I guess would be the 11th, is the second Saturday of the month, which means you can get into the Courier Art Gallery for free if you're a New Hampshire resident. You can get more information about that always, about what's going on at the Courier at courier.org. Um, and if you're listening to Carla and I talk about the stupidity in both the city government and the state government and just government in general, um, maybe you should take the time and get involved. The Manchester Republican Committee meets on the third Wednesday of every month at Murphy's Tap Room at 6.30 in the evening. You can come by at 6 and socialize a little bit, uh, but the meetings start at 6 30 on the third Wednesday, which is next Wednesday, January 15th. Uh, you don't have to be a registered Republican. You can be a like-minded undeclared voter, and we'd love to see some new faces and get more people involved in maybe changing the craziness that is our city government and the state government for that matter. So that's what's coming up. Um, knock on wood, the weather's holding up. I thought we were going to have it's a terrible- to be 60 on Saturday. On Saturday and it, but that? it's going to rain, I think. So if you have ice, that's going to be your time to, to get rid of it. <laughs> yep. um, but otherwise, you know, get out there, enjoy. There's a um, walk next Saturday, the 18th, at the Audubon Center in Auburn. Um, it's a walk to talk about um, identifying birds in the winter, and they oh, do a cool. binocular thing. I think it's like $18 or $15 for non-members. Dan and I, I think, are going to go oh, just I because do that. it yeah. seems like a good way, reason to get outdoors and do something. I mean, if it's blizzarding, I mean, I'm not going. But, right. you know, there's things to do, places to go, things to see. You know, Indeed. new year. <laughs> Um, that's all we have, I think. What do you got? Anything? Anything exciting coming up? Right no. to know? Anything about right uh, to know? I mean, there are a ton of right to know bills coming up. Of course, anyone who's interested in testifying on bills, get involved. Yep. Uh, you know, talk talk to your friends, yep. talk to your neighbors. Yep. And if you're passionate about something, find that passion yep. and come up and let them know. You know, testimony yep. at the State House can be important. And um, the cameras on Elm Street went up. Mm. Boo. Uh, What's up with that? Quickly, we won't have time to talk about it. Somehow the court decided that Concord can have some weird surveillance system that the taxpayers can't know what it is. Yep. Yeah, that's got to be found unconstitutional. Yeah, no. That's going to go up the food chain. Yep. That That's nuts. No, more nuts. lawsuits. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, anyways, so enjoy the week. We'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye. Peace out.